planning, we are planning to uh, be back in uh, the building for in-person worship this Sunday at 1030. Uh, we're here every Wednesday on Zoom and Facebook Live for our, our virtual Bible study. All right, so um, in addition, um, if you want to join, look at our website. Website is lighthousesc.org. And of course, we are on radio every Monday at noon on 106.3 WJNI. All right, so tonight we're talking about, um, it's going to be a little different format. Um, we, we're, we use this time for our Bible study. Still yet, we make it more collaborative because this is the time where we want feedback from um, the audience if they so choose on Sunday morning a lot of times you can't you know offer questions make a response offer a rebuttal whatever the case may be and so we want this time to give you space or the people space to listen to share uh, to comment or in this instance to ask questions so um, today we're excited we have Wes Thrift and I'm gonna give him an opportunity to um, introduce himself in a second um, and he's going to shed light on the subject at hand. We're talking about a Christian's response to COVID-19 and the Delta variant. Let me give you a scripture just to get things started. So one of my favorite scriptures is in Proverbs 4, 7. It says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all you're getting, get understanding. Now, by definition, wisdom is good judgment. It is knowledge. It is common sense. And it's logic. And so Obviously, as Christians, we know we address things from the spiritual realm, from the spiritual side of things. However, the Bible also instructs us to address challenges that we face, problems, dilemmas, in this case, a pandemic, using wisdom, using good judgment, using knowledge, common sense, and logic. And I believe we have to embrace that balance as Christians or we'll miss out on uh, some of the things I think God wants to see take place in our life. Obviously, the pandemic isn't just... Uh, affecting is affecting everybody christians included really and so we want to talk about this we want to give uh, uh, a sp spiritual backdrop if you will but in addition we want to give facts data research information so we can make a good judgment to help mitigate the spread of this virus because it's this virus because it's in, in impacting everybody and um we want to look at and talk about how it's impacting uh the church all right. So, Wes, thanks for coming. We, we're having some problems with uh, our camera. My camera's working. Wes' camera isn't. And so I think it is not his fault. It's, it's something I think on my end that I set up. So, Wes, if you would, please uh, tell us who you are, what is your job role, and how long have you worked in this capacity, if you will? All right. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Pastor Byron, for inviting me on tonight. It is, it is definitely an honor. Uh, to be able to, to use this platform, uh, literally just to, to educate others who, who aren't in, in the field or as close to it. Um, just to give you all a little background, uh, Byron and I went to high school together. Yeah. Uh, he's a much better basketball player than I am. Uh, I, you know, the coach told me one thing when I got in the game and that was give the ball to Byron. So <laughs> if it, my wife might not, might not say so, but I am a good listener when it comes to, to doing what I'm told on, on the court. Um, but thanks for having me tonight. Um, I, I want to keep this interactive as well. And so, you know, at any point, if you want to unmute and ask me a question, uh, we'll keep it informal and, and I'll stop and I'll, I'll do the best I can. Um, I am uh, a, a father of, of, of two children. I just put my daughter, uh, she's a freshman at University of South Carolina, and my son is a sixth grader. Uh, my wife, I've uh, been married for over 20 years. Uh, she is a school teacher of about 25 years. And so I, some of the topic uh, that we're going to talk about tonight, I'm, I'm seeing it from the school district side as well. Um, but I um, most recently in my career, uh, I graduated um, high school, I mean, I'm sorry, college from the College of Charleston with a business degree. Um, I was in the dental field for about 10 years. In the last 14 years, I've been with Roper St. Francis Healthcare here in Charleston. Uh, we have four hospitals, um, the latest up in uh, Berkeley County. We've been up there at the Berkeley Hospital for about five years. My role with the hospital is um, administration and operations. Uh, so I'm not a physician. I, I can answer some physician-like questions, um, but most of, of what I'm gonna tell you tonight is from an operational standpoint. Um, I've been um, in, in task with getting some of the uh, vaccine clinics off the ground. 
uh, the big one we had at the North Charleston Coliseum most recently uh, to get those folks vaccinated that are, um, that are 12 years and older. Um, I've been involved with getting uh, the swabbing clinics that are going around town. Uh, if you have COVID-like symptoms, uh, that's some of the projects that I've been involved in. Uh, it has been hot and heavy for the last 18, 19 months. There has been a huge strain on the healthcare system and I'll go into a little bit more of that um, here in just a little bit. What I wanna do um, is, is keep everybody in, in, informed um, because you know, good news and bad news with, with social media, we've got a lot of information at our fingertips. And, and, and unfortunately that has been um, misused um, a lot. And uh, you know, some of the COVID stuff has been um, politicized. Um, and I, I'm, I'm here to tell you firsthand that uh, COVID doesn't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. Um, this, this disease is, uh, is really taking the whole world um, by storm. Uh, some of the, you know, the vaccines, the approval of the vaccines and things have been sped up uh, because it is such a dangerous disease. And so you will hear people, um, you know, be a little leery because of how quickly the vaccine came out. But with technology and scientists, it's, it's been forced that way. Um, you know, in the past, we've had the luxury of waiting years and years before vaccines um, have been approved, but we just don't have that luxury anymore. And so um, I, I'm here to tell you that the vaccines that are on the market, um, Pfizer right now has been FDA approved. And excuse me, the Moderna um, vaccine will be FDA approved very soon. Um, and, and we even heard as early as today that um, Pfizer is working to get um, kids five years old to 12 years old um, approved for the vaccine. Uh, so currently only 12 years and older um, are approved to get the vaccine. My son's 11, he won't be 12 until uh, December. And so we heard as early as today that maybe by the end of October, um, Pfizer will be approved to give um, five to uh, 12 year old vaccine. So that's good news for the schools and all the problems that they're having. So I, I just want to to hit you with a couple of, um, of cup, a couple of quick stats. I always like to start off my staff meetings and things with with positive notes and I, I am I'm happy to announce that our COVID um, hospitalization rates are going down. Uh, a lot of this is attributed you know, around holidays. you'll see spikes when when families are together. Uh, when large gatherings um, happen. But as of this morning's report, um, and I speak just of Roper St. Francis Healthcare, so the four hospital system, um, the four hospitals in our system, we are down to 140 um, hospitalized folks with COVID. Um, we had an all time high of 195 folks back on September 13th. So just, just a week ago, we hit our all time high and that broke the all-time high of last June, uh, so summer of, of last year. Uh, I think that was around 156. So this thing, uh, it, it and comes and goes. We see spikes. Um, we, we have very intelligent people on staff that, that follow um, you know, other, other countries and other municipalities that are, that are ahead of us when some of these waves come. And this was somewhat predictable that this would happen. Uh, especially after Labor Day. So we hit our all-time high of 195 a week ago, and, and I'm happy to announce that we are slowly coming back down at 140 today. 111 of those folks that are hospitalized due to COVID are unvaccinated. So that's 79% of the folks that are in the hospital due to COVID are unvaccinated. 29 of them are in the ICU, and 22 of those are on ventilator fully vaccinated, there's 29 of those 140 that are fully vaccinated, seven in ICU and four on ventilators. So again, we, we hear some of these terms, um, we all, you know, we all probably know of someone um, or hopefully not a family member, but we all know of some people who have been in ICU. So that's the intensive care unit. That's where you go when you need the most care that a hospital can provide. Uh, ventilators are really bad news. Ventilators mean that they cannot breathe on their own. And so 22 of the 140 um, 
are, are on um, a ventilator right now. And so they literally cannot breathe on their own. Um, a couple, couple of things I wanna point out, um, you know, the, the, the huge strain that's on the hospital system due to COVID patients, and in particular right now, um, the unvaccinated is the strain that it puts on other folks who, who aren't uh, quote unquote sick with COVID, uh, car accidents, um, sports injuries, uh, you know, sicknesses with, with, their, um, with heart disease and lung disease. And those folks, that, that stuff doesn't stop. And so you, you've got COVID issues and then you've got our normal stuff. And, and the, the sad news is, is where we ran out of space. Again, we're getting a little bit better this past week, but you, you think about when hospitals say they're full, that literally means they're full. And so if, if, if there is a bad car accident or something, it, we, we can't help as much as we could. And then when we do get patients in the hospitals, we just don't have the staff anymore because the staff are starting to get sick. Um, there are breakthrough cases right now, and that's why it's not 100% in the hospital like it was maybe a month and a half ago, there was a stat that came out. There were 100% of the unvaccinated patients in the hospital due to COVID. And that's come back down. I think it's, um, I said earlier, it's 79% because you will see a breakthrough case here and there with this new Delta variant. So it, it's, it's not a slam dunk if you get the vaccine, but I can tell you right now, you have a way better chance of not being in the hospital for one, but not being on a ventilator is, is the big one. Um, so just the overall quality of care goes down um, when, when the hospital system gets, gets a big push like we've seen. Um, so I'll, I'll stop there. I, I don't wanna bore you too much with the stats, but at the end of the day, you know, getting the vaccine is gonna really help you stay out of the hospital and, and, and even more so stay off the ventilators and stay off of ICU. Um, some, some people do have underlying conditions um, and those, those add another layer to this problem. Excellent, I'm gonna get you to weigh in a little bit more. I wanted to um, share some of my thoughts, um, someone who's not in the medical field and what I've seen um, in friends, family members and in the body of Christ, again, you know, my, um, I guess my priority as a pastor is to inform Christians on how we should respond. And I found that uh, Christians, I can ask about five believers about what their take is on COVID. And I get five different responses. Mm -hmm. I do think sometimes we have a challenge of uh, balancing faith and facts. Uh, we've been taught, myself included, you know, that, you know, your faith can change the facts, or maybe some people have thought that uh, faith means that we deny the facts. I beg to differ. I disagree. Um, I think we need information. We need wisdom. Like we quoted in Proverbs 4, 7. Uh, we need to be educated. We know we need to be educated on spiritual things, but it also is important for us to be educated in natural things as well. For instance, you know, we all go through um, the public school system, some kind of um, formal education, whether it's public, private, um, in person, online, whatever the case may be. And we all understand the value of having a great education. It helps us to um, have opportunities uh, to jobs, employment, earn a living. We all have to be educated. We have to have some skills, some trade, um, some kind of background that would make us serviceable in society. And so we understand the value of having a natural education. Obviously, Christians, we know the benefit and how important it is for us to be spiritually educated. But on the natural side, I found with this um, pandemic in particular, sometimes Christians, we ignore the education that we need in order to help mitigate the effects of this virus. I've seen, and I argue, Christians, and, and you know, you can fact check me, but demographically, we are one of the leaders of people who are being affected by COVID, we, um, our response and our reaction, we'll talk about the mask and the vaccines. And I, and I understand that is a personal choice, but my thing is um, we need to get the information. We need to get the facts. That's what I brought Wes in. He sees things um, every single day and his perspective is a little different from ours. He's on ground level. His, 
his boots on the ground with the staff that he, he manages, supervises, and he's he's been in the system for many years. And I think when he shares and we have that perspective, we collect all this information and all this data, we can make an educated decision for ourselves. And so we do need education. There's a lot of uh, information out there, but there's a lot of misinformation. And we're leaving, living in a time where a lot of people get their news from social media. And unfortunately, we get a lot of our medical advice from social media, TikTok, Twitter. And again, that's not wise. That's not wise at all. We need to talk to medical professionals uh, who have the information, who have the data, so we can make an educated decision. And I think as Christians, sometimes we negate that. Um, and we have to realize prayer doesn't take the place of getting information and knowledge. Prayer or, or believing God and having faith doesn't take the place of getting all the facts, getting all the information. Jesus said, you know, if you're going to build a tower, count the costs, you know, uh, right. get a plan together, you know, document what it's going to take or you build and may not be able to finish it. So as Christians, I think, you know, and I'm, I'm talking about myself, I'm part of the Christian community, we all are. We don't do a great job of getting information so we can make sound choices. And in this case, about our health. So I'm gonna give a couple of facts. Wes gave uh, a few facts too. And I'll say this, um, because this session is a little different. If you want to raise your hand, um, and I can acknowledge if, if a question comes to mind, I don't mind stopping. I don't mind pausing to address the question. We are going to allow time uh, for everyone to ask questions or make a comment at the end. But throughout the session, if you want to stop or you want to raise your hand or something comes to mind, feel free to put it in the chat bar or, or raise your hand um, using the tool at the bottom of your screen uh, so we, we can acknowledge you. But um, some of my observations right now, um, and maybe it possibly has changed a little bit. Over 664 people in the United States have died. 664,000, 664,000 people right. have died in the U.S. Um, over COVID, 4.4 million deaths in the entire world. Um, I've had family and friends impacted by this. Um, now, I have to tell you, and understand this, I'm, I'm not necessarily, now I've been vaccinated, by the way. I have been vaccinated. Data shows, just so you know, 95% of pastors either are vaccinated or intend to be vaccinated. Only 50% of congregations are vaccinated. I'm, I'm, those are just the numbers. Um, but I have had people in my life, I've lost uh, classmates um, due to COVID. I had friends and family members uh, suffer the effects of COVID. Some made it, some did not. I've known well-known pastors, pastors who have passed away okay, due to COVID. So we have to take this seriously. We have to have a conversation about this. Now, I am not, and we'll, we'll get more into the discussion about the vaccines and masks. I'm not, again, I am vaccinated. I'm not necessarily pro-vaccine or pro-mask, but I am pro-family and pro-friends. And I don't want to lose any of my friends. I don't want to lose any more of my loved ones due to COVID. So whatever we have to do to mitigate this risk and to right. get rid of this virus, I'm all for it. Yes, you have to do your research. And we'll, we'll talk more about the trepidation about the vaccines and the questions about masks. But um, I'm pro people. <laughs> and I don't want right. we've lost too many people. I mean, over half a million people in the U United States, over half a million. A lot of those people are Christians. OK, four and a half million, million people in the entire world. Well, Pastor Graham, I've heard this argument. We, we, we lose a lot of people due to heart disease, too. We lose a lot of people, you know, due to the flu every year. Okay, but right now, this is something that's different. We haven't seen before, more deadly than the flu, and this will kill you a lot quicker than heart disease. Yes, we need to address heart disease. Yes, we need to eat better and have healthy habits. I get that. Okay, but this is really taking people out, and it has changed our entire world. It's changed the way we worship. It's changed the way our children socialize and go to school and do events. It's changed uh, how we work how we social, you know, everything has changed due to COVID. We have to address this um, in the body of Christ. In the short term, it's not going to be the same. I mean, churches are going okay. virtual. There are limitations even with in-person worship services. I know churches to this day, they still have not opened at all. And again, I, that's a pastor's decision. You know, at the end of the day, the people need to be safe. But I know some churches who are still closed and they're just doing, some are not even doing virtual. They're just doing audio. People can call and maybe some of the congregations who aren't as savvy with technology, they just have their members to call in and they listen to an audio sermon. 
And I know a lot of people would rather come back in person, but right. we have to prioritize safety. So um, these are a lot of pressing issues. Um, and we'll get into this a little bit more. I'm going to let uh, Wes, you share a little bit more. You answered a lot of my questions. I was going to ask you, you know, kind of what have you seen? And I, I've seen that as well with the hospitals being overcrowded. Uh, well, let's talk about this. Tell me about this. This is a big contentious um, subject right here, because in school board meetings, um, they're fussing, arguing, getting into fist fights. What's your opinion about masks and do they work in your from, sure. based on what you see? Sure. And let me back up a second, too, because I, I failed to mention just so we're all on the same page. Oh, one second. Oh, Wes, um, I got a question real quick. Just me, Sister Mix, I'm going to let you speak. Speak. Uh, Sister Mixon, go right ahead. Let's see, are you able to, Sister Mixon? Or I hope I didn't block everybody. Let me see. Uh, uh, I know Sister Holmes was. The, maybe she put her hand up by mistake. Okay. <laughs> she she um, can interrupt me. She can interrupt me if she needs to. I wanted to just take a step back um, just to second. make sister, sure we're, we're, we're all, is she there? One sister Mixon, if something's wrong with your mic or if there's an issue, or if you can just put it in the chat. I don't know if you had your hand up by mistake or you can write in it. Oh, here you go. It was a mistake. Okay. <laughs> all right, gotcha. yeah, go <laughs> Thank you. All right, go ahead, Wes. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to back up just a second. And, and uh, so we're all on the same page. I am absolutely a Christ follower. Um, I am 45 years old. I grew up in the Methodist church. And uh, um, my wife and I, when we got married, uh, we joined uh, Seacoast Community Church, and we go to the Mount Pleasant campus, and we've been going there for, uh, I'd say, right about 20 years. So just, just for all those on, on the phone, I am, I am a Christ follower. Um, I chose Roper St. Francis Healthcare when I wanted to get into healthcare because of their mission, and that's healing all, all people with compassion, faith, and, and excellence. And so we are a faith-based hospital here in the Low Country. So I just wanted to um, to point that out um, and, and going just real quick before I forget on, on the flu um, comment, you know, one of the myths about um, COVID, you, you've probably heard it as well, you know, you know, people die from the flu and that's true, um, but the flu averages about 36,000 people a year with deaths. Uh, and then, you know, going back to your 600,000 um, people have died so far from COVID and, and this is not even two years old. So do people die from the flu? Absolutely, but not at this rate. And so that's another myth that's kind of out there that, well, you know, you can die from the flu. Sure you can, um, but, but not at this rate. Um, I do want to point out a really fun fact, um, and I, I won't put you on the spot and ask you, but a, a, a little historical fact here. Does and anybody on the phone, if they know, does anybody know who the first person to get a COVID vaccine in the United States was? I'll see if I see if you see any hands up so I don't ruin the trivia. But um, her, her name was Sandra Lindsay, and she was an African American uh, female. And she was in the Long Island uh, Medical Center back in uh, December of 2020. Uh, so, you know, there, there's a little history for you. Um, African American female was the very first uh, recipient of the COVID vaccine. Uh, I can send um, Pastor Byron the, the link to it. It's a really good story. Um, you know, going into her fears of not only being, you know, the first, but, you know, going back to the, the African-American um, history in the 1930s when they had the, the syphilis study, um, where the African-Americans were, um, were, were really guinea pigs, for lack of a better word. And, and so I, I see that. Um, those are some discussions that we've had um, uh, on my end. A lot of my staff are African-American, and, and we understand that, the hesitancy um, from the African Americans to to get the vaccine just based on um, based on history and so um, that little fun fact for you. Um, but going going to your question, um, Pastor Byron, the um, the mask this this is a whole you know whole different ball game here. If you think back about um, you know how how this disease is transmitted, uh, a lot of it is airborne, um, and so. I know I can count on one hand how many people I know in working in the, um, the medical field that got the flu last fall. You know, usually our flu season is, is fall and winter, 
And, and they're just all of a sudden there wasn't a flu because a lot of us were masked up. And so that can't be by coincidence. Um, so, you know, I wear a mask at work because I, I am, I am need to, um, it is a mandate by our, um, position. I, uh, I wear a mask in crowds. Um, I don't wear a mask in my house. Um, I, I wear a mask in, in church settings and large gatherings. Um, I'm not a hundred percent compliant on that. Um, but I, you know, I, I do tend to, to forget sometimes, but I, do I think that, that masks work? Absolutely. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of studies still ongoing about masks. Uh, you know, some people say it's only 10%, it's only 15%. Well, that's a lot, you know, and, and if, if it's going to protect me and give me, you know, if the vaccine is going to be 88% effective, and then if I can wear a mask, it's going to be another 15% effective. And then if we can practice safe social distancing, there's, there's another component. So going back to your point, you know, we, we as the people, Christ followers need to set an example and, and we need to change. And, and for lack of a better word, there is a lot of selfishness going on right now. And, and people just don't want to be inconvenienced and uncomfortable. I, I don't enjoy wearing my mask a lot, but I know that it's going to save someone. You know, your mask protects other people from you. And so if you don't wear your mask, you know, it, it is looked at, it could be looked at as being selfish. Um, the schools, again, I, I told you my wife is, um, is a school teacher, has been a school teacher for 25 years. Um, it, you know, I, I, my son wears a mask at school because I think that's best for him. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of parents uh, that are just, just outrageous about their kids wearing a mask. Uh, and I had this conversation with someone last night. If we if we lead by example, uh, honestly, I think a lot of people are trying to be friends with their kids instead of parents. <laughs> yeah. And and they and and they get involved in some things sometimes that they shouldn't. If I tell my son who's 11 years old that I think it's a good idea for him to wear a mask, he's going to do it. And I think if parents just take that lead. Um, and lead by example, we, we had basketball season last year, we had to wear masks unless they were in the game. I mean, there's just some some stuff that's just uncomfortable for us because we're in we're in new territory right now and we don't have all the answers. But the but the physicians and the scientists tell us that it's it's good to do this. It's good to do that. I'm not a doctor. I, they went to school for that. Let's do it. You know, I, I, we've got too many people out there that are trying to play doctor. And, and trying to play, you know, infectious disease experts. And that's where the social media stuff comes in. There's a lot of misinformation. I do want to, um, for those of you who are on social media, um, I, I encourage you to follow um, Roper St. Francis Healthcare on, on Facebook. Um, we started about maybe three weeks ago um, with something called, let me look it up here and make sure I don't um, butcher it, but it's um, myths. Here it is, myths and myths and facts. And so every day or two, um, Roper will post uh, something that is a myth and then the fact. And so those those are those are real live, um, you know, physicians that are that are making these statements. And so you don't have to rely on your neighbor or your cousin to you know to tell you what's what's really happening in the hospitals. And what's really happening in science? You can go straight to credible websites um, and and people like that. And so I, I I started to follow that too, just that one little section. And uh, and it, it's it's great. It's daily reminders, and it and it puts to bed some of these myths that we're hearing. I want to share a couple of things. Thank you, and I'm gonna give you a chance to respond, uh, weigh in a little bit more. Right now, um, at our church, we've put into some. Um, embrace some safety measures. Right now we're checking temperatures at the door. We do have in-person worship services. Um, we check temperatures at the door. We have instructed uh, members, those who visit to wear masks if they have not been fully vaccinated. Right. Um, beginning this week, we're, I'm going to encourage people when they're interacting with people. Now, sometimes we have a very large auditorium, so we can socially distance easily. And, and I understand, um, I mean, Again, like Wes said, wearing a mask can be inc very inconvenient. 
Um, and so when families are sitting together, they may or may not want to take off their mask. I understand if they do, if there's no one else around. But um, I'm going to start encouraging people, that especially when you come into church, when you leave, when you're interacting, please keep your mask on. Um, because we want to continue to worship. Um, and if we if, if the virus continues to spread, it's going to make it very difficult to do so. So again, we're checking temperatures, we wear masks um, to try to mitigate that. I, I do want to share a little bit of my story, my wife's story about the uh, vaccine. You did hit on something that there's a lot of vaccine hesitancy, and I get that. You know, a lot of people are concerned about the rollout, how quickly it came out. Uh, you referenced West, the FDA approval. I was not aware that Moderna was going to be approved uh, soon. While I'm thinking about it, is there anything about Johnson & Johnson about their FDA approval? Do you hear anything? I, I, have, not heard, um, I have not heard anything about Johnson & Johnson. Uh, I would imagine they're going to be a little later than Moderna if they do get it. Okay. Um, you know, I, we, we as a system have not promoted Johnson & Johnson. Okay. Uh, so I really, I'm not really close to that, but I, I do know that Moderna is, is really close to getting that as well. And, and, and here's another fact too, we've, we've seen in the hospitals, we've seen a little bit better um, acceptance and a little bit better success with Moderna vaccine with the Delta variant, oh, um, you know, about, about 2% more um, um help on the Moderna vaccine with, with the new variant. And so, you know, there's a lot of talk about boosters now and, um, you know, should I stick with the Pfizer? If I got the Pfizer, can I jump over to the Moderna? Um, you know, they're telling us to stay. If you get a booster, they're telling you to stay with what you got the first time. But if you can't, then the other one is okay. Uh, so there's, gotcha. there's something there too. Thank you. I, I do want to share someone who's not in the medical field. Um, what my story was, uh, my wife's story was and uh, how we approach the vaccines. Again, I do realize this is an individual decision. And, uh, you know, Wes referenced, you know, African Americans, we, there's an additional trepidation because, you know, the Tuskegee situation where, you know, we were used as guinea pigs. And so there's a lot of hesitancy there. And you have people of different races, backgrounds, um, and backgrounds who have different reasons why they're hesitant. But this is how we approach it. Well, my wife and I, um, we were caregivers. She was primarily to her parents who were up in age and they were, uh, they were ill. And um, my wife was very, at the time, at the time, this was prior to the Delta variant. She was a little hesitant about getting the vaccine, didn't really want to get it. But because she was the primary caregiver for her parents, she never, she didn't want to put them at risk. And she didn't want to live with the right. idea of her affecting them um, being up in age and having their own health issues. So she got vaccinated. Uh, myself, I, um, I work with uh, kids, you know, uh, one of the things that in addition to pastor, I'm a bivocational pastor, I'm a certified math teacher, so I'm working with kids, and um, they can't be vaccinated, they could carry the virus, I didn't want to be affected, and at the time, we weren't doing all virtual instruction, we were doing some in-person instruction, so I was concerned about either me, um, you know, getting effect, infected and passing it on to them, or vice versa, and so because I, I wasn't in a situation where I had the privilege of working from home, so I wouldn't be out and about with people, um, I felt I needed to get vaccinated as well. And I was thinking about my daughters, because um, even though the data that's come out shows, at least prior to the Delta, it didn't really affect kids as much right. as adults. However, my understanding is that with the Delta variant, it has been affecting children. So I didn't want to affect them. And I was the secondary, if you will, a caregiver for my, my in-laws. And I definitely didn't want to mm -hmm. infect them as well. Um, in addition, my parents, you know, who I interact with, and when I'm around them, even though I've been vaccinated, I keep my mask on. I wear it a great deal when I'm around them because I don't want to, you know, put them at risk. And so that's why we decided to get it. I believe in prayer and medicine, prayer and vac vaccine. I, I, we got it for that reason, because as, and again, it's not bulletproof, like Wes said, it's a layer of protection, but that was the reason why we did it. Um, I, I have to tell you that for a while, um, first of all, vaccines have been around forever. You know, children of men, you know, they're required to do certain vac vaccinations. And I remember years ago when I was playing college basketball, the coach, and I didn't even think about pushing back against it, um, he made us all because we were on scholarship and 
basketball is a winter sport and they wanted us to make sure they wanted to make sure we were available. So they made us all take the flu shot. And I got to tell you, um, now that was, you know, over 20 years ago, but uh, when I took the flu shot, it made me sick. They were side mm-hmm. effects. Um, right. and I, it doesn't affect everyone the same way, but I felt horrible every time I took it. Um, and so after I played basketball, um, I can't say I was anti-vaccine or whatnot, but I have to tell you, um, after I graduated, I never took the flu shot again up until like last year because I, I just couldn't stand that feeling. Um, fast forward 20 some odd years, um, our job was offering flea, free flu shots and they were encouraging us to take it. And I went and I was about not to take it again because I always would turn it down. And I asked the nurse, I said, listen, um, is this going to make me sick? I said, Mr. Graham, I promise you um, this will not make you sick. Now, I don't know the difference. I don't know if things have changed. I don't know if 20 years of uh, advancements have taken place but um i took it this time the flu shot and i was fine so um you know that's my take with you know flu or even that's the reason why my wife and i were right. vaccinated as well um and i i do agree with with you wes because um it, it you know the way i look at it is the vaccine is for me and wearing a mask is for you um mm-hmm. And I want to do that to protect not just myself, but I want to protect my children, to protect my family, protect colleagues. And I will say this, and I'm not saying that I'm, you know, just pushing the vaccine. Listen, I know there are certain people who will never take the vaccine, no matter what I say. Um, I do want to give information to people who may be considering taking the vaccine. They're not vaccinated right now to give them some information so they can make an intelligent decision for themselves. Right. And um, so you know, we, we have to gather this, this information. We have to gather um, this data so we can, you know, put all this together and make the best decision for mm-hmm. our families. I was going to share something else. I lost my train of thought. Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to I touch on, I want to touch ahead. on what you just said, because you, you did Sorry. bring up a good point. Um, you know, it, as silly as it sounds, w- when you get any kind of vaccine, and, and you do have some sort of side effect or, and we call it sickness, that, that really, as silly as it sounds, that means it's working um, because, you know, I, I've That's got a lot right. of colleagues. I personally, uh, both shots that I took, I, I never felt anything, no sickness or anything. My wife, after her first shot, she was sick. She was sick for about 36 hours. Hmm. I've seen some colleagues get sick for two days, really no more than two days. And so, you know, that, that tells you that the vaccine is working. Um, it's like when people get chemotherapy, they mm-hmm. feel worse before they feel better. That right. means the drug is working. Um, so you, again, going back to, you know, a, a minor inconvenience, would I rather, you know, feel uncomfortable, you know, nauseous, um, you know, flu-like stuff for a couple of days to avoid staying in the hospital for months? Absolutely. So, you know, and again, it's, it's, it's not a done deal that you're going to get sick if you get the vaccine. You're, you probably have a 50, 50, 60% chance of not feeling anything. Um, but if you do feel bad, it's gone. It's gone in 24 to 36 hours. And then you have that, that layer of protection that's going to last, you know, for a long time. And so again, a, a minor inconvenience for, for long-term protection, not only for you, but for the people around you. And so just, just keep that in mind. And that's for flu shot, for COVID shot, for anything. We've, we've got to start thinking long-term. We all want to get back to life as we, as we knew it. Um, but, you know, I, I think we just hit the 50% mark in, um, in, for the state for vaccinations. We were maybe 48th, I think the last I saw, 48th. I mean, oh, it's crazy. I mean, we, I don't know in the South. I mean, I, I'm, I grew up in Charleston. I know I'm a little slow, but, you know, <laughs> we, they talk about education and you realize you know, here education. we are, you know, here we are, we're, we're almost dead last with getting the vaccination. And, you know, I, I don't want to turn this political, but, you know, it goes a lot to your leaders um, and your leaders lead. Uh, And, you know, so I think if if some of some of our leaders would would um, would have, you know, blessed the vaccine a little quicker, maybe we we could have we could have not been 48. But, um, you know, again, if we want to get back to normal as we knew it, 
the more vaccines um, that are given, um, the more masking that we can see, we, we have a fighting chance. So I, I, what I was going to say when I lost my train of thought, um, because I, I just want to give people facts and data information so they can make the best choice for them on how they're going to keep their family safe. I did have some colleagues and I was very concerned about them. This happened actually in the last couple of weeks. And um, they were COVID positive. And they were both up in, they were in their 60s. Uh, one was close to her 70s. Now I will say, this is just information. They both were vaccinated and they told me the vaccine worked for me. So I can't speak for anybody else. It worked for me. He said, all I had was a slight headache. All I had was like a small tummy ache. Right. And, and I was fine. And they, and they were almost, I mean, and I can imagine it does happen. They were, they wondered they got a false positive, but um, I think they verified that they in fact did have COVID, but their symptoms were so mild and they, this was their words. Okay. I'm not, you know, trying to put words in their mouth. They felt that the reason why they recovered so quickly was because they were, they were fully vaccinated. Absolutely. Um, I've had, I had someone actually talk to me today, two people, there was a brother in Christ. So I talked to awesome, um, you know, praise and worship leader. And he um, did some things for us a while back and he he's recovering. And he said, it was, it was rough. He was, he was on a ventilator. Um, and I, you know, I said, listen, we're praying for you. And I asked him, I said, um, if you don't mind my asking, you know, were you vaccinated? I'm, I'm trying to get some information. I said, we're going to have a discussion, you know, um, a couple of days about COVID. I just want to see what people are saying. He said, I was not vaccinated. He said, but Pastor Graham, uh, when I get out of the hospital, the first thing I'm going to do is going to be back. I'm going to go get vaccinated. Mm -hmm. He said, I can't go through this again. He said, it was terrible. It was terrible. And he said, I'm off a ventilator now. He said, but it was so hard. Um, so what I'm seeing, and I had on the flip side, um, I had a gentleman I knew he's just in his 40s. Now, I will say I cannot confirm that he was or was not vaccinated. Um, the feeling was, well, all I know is that he did have COVID. I don't know his vaccination status, but he passed away and he was probably like 44 or 45. Mm -hmm. um, I found another friend of mine, he was 66, he passed away. I don't know if it was COVID or not, but I do know the, the buddy of mine who was in his 40s, he had COVID. So, um, and I think I didn't, I think his wife had it too. I'm not sure if she, what's going on with her, if she made it or not. But um, these are real life stories, you know, in some way we have to mitigate the spread of the violent, the virus, because we, we want to get back to, you know, some normalcy. And again, the Bible says wisdom is, is, is common. It's common sense. You know, some things we have to take a common sense approach. Well, Pastor Graham, but God tells you to do things that don't make sense. Sometimes I, I beg to differ. I think what God tells us to do makes a whole lot of sense mm -hmm. and he'll put us in a position. He'll give us information. He'll give us the knowledge and the wherewithal to make good sound decisions about our health. I don't think, and I need to say this, you know, taking medicine, using a medical science, you know, uh, doing whatever we need to do medically to mitigate sickness or disease takes away from us believing God for healing. It, it doesn't take away from God's supernatural power to work in our lives. I think we can work, use both of them. We can use, have the natural and the supernatural working together. Sure. Um, so I don't think it is, a, and I think I need to say this, I don't think it's a sign of a lack of faith to go get tested, to wear a mask, if you choose to be vaccinated. Hey, Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. You know, some people believe God and they wear their masks. I believe God and I wear my seatbelt. I trust right. God. I believe in healing and I got vaccinated. That's so, right. you know, some can argue that the vaccine was a miracle how quick it came out how quick it was available and it's free you know that i'm not saying that definitively but you can you can argue that you know some see that you know how quickly it can and, and the data shows it has saved lives right um so you know again this whole discussion is a christian's response you know how do we respond i just want us to get all the data all the information i want us to be educated so you can make the decision for yourself now, Wes, I'll ask you this, and we'll, we'll wrap it up, and I'm going to give uh, opportunity for those who may want to ask questions. Um, again, I said there are certain, some people, respectfully, no matter 
what data comes out, no matter what anyone says, no matter what politician, what uh, preacher says, they're never going to take the vaccine. Okay, not worrying about that. You know, you know that's their choice. Some people they're pro vaccine, and, and that's their choice as well. What would you say to those people who are on the fence, though? What would you say to them who are unsure? There is some hesitancy, but they're thinking about being vaccinated. What can you right. say? That's a great question, um, you know, and, and I and I have had this same discussion um, with a few of my uh, friends and, and actually colleagues because, um, you know, Roper has mandated the vaccine for our employees. And so I'm, I'm going through it now. Um, I've got about 100 employees in my region who are unvaccinated and, and potentially could lose their job. And Roper has come out, MUSC has come out and made a stance where you, where you have to be vaccinated. So these are, these are conversations that I'm, I just had today with, with a few folks. And I, and I get it. I, I think we're, we're lucky enough in, in America to, to be free and to make personal choices. Um, you know, my, my, uh, my advice would be, you know, look, look outward. Um, if, if you, if you have your convictions, I want you to think about others because again, this disease, it's not just about you. Um, you know, it's not just about you uh, getting sick. It's about you infecting others. Um, and so, you know, again, if you don't choose to do it for yourself, think about others in your community, think about people in your church, because we, we don't know who we're infecting when we, when we infect people. The vaccine helps you not infect others. And so, it, you know, I, I think it's as, it's as simple as that. Um, you know, just think about others. You know, um, again, it's a personal choice and, I, and I've got some hard stances from some employees and, and I respect that. Um, but I, I, I say the same thing to them that I'm, that I'm saying to you now. Um, just think about your family members. Think about the people that you touch in your life. And just think about, you know, helping them stay healthy. Because again, going back to the mask, the mask, you wearing the mask protects you from them. And the vaccine, getting the vaccine helps you have a better chance of not getting COVID and not spreading COVID and not dying from COVID. And so it's, it's literally, it's not, it's not all, you know, about you, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Think about others. In, in, in protecting your communities and, and putting putting that shield up, um, you know, to protect your community and, and, your, and the people you love. Absolutely. I, I think, um, that, you know, gives us a different perspective because a lot of times, and like I said, my wife and I, it, it, we originally um, thought about decision, not for us, we were thinking about our elderly parents. That's right. That's a great <laughs> example. You, you, you did it and and others have done it to protect, you know, the elderly um, because they're just at risk. I mean, there's some people yeah. that can fight this off and there's, and there's others that just can't. I mean, you see, you see young people dying and there's kids that have passed away. They just, they just, this, this disease affects people in different ways mm. and some people just cannot shake it. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this, um, those, those are just facts. I had a family member just today, and this was early before the Delta variant came out before we knew a lot about the, the virus. And uh, she said, she remembered she went to church and, you know, it was just a regular church service. It was a large congregation. They were, it was a big crowd. And, and she found out <laughs> after the fact that the entire deacon board was sick, yeah. but then learned the entire deacon board, deacon board had COVID and she got, she and her husband, got COVID, uh, was infected. And unfortunately, since then, two of the deacons passed away. And wow. now she said, they know they had COVID. They don't know if they died because of COVID. But this family member, she said, you know, we got COVID because like, you know, for why I couldn't, I was trying to figure out what was wrong with me. She eventually, you know, they did all these tests, ruled everything out and said, you have COVID. And he said, Byron did a number on my body. He said, I'm, st I'm still having effects. Now, since then, and they were vaccinated. Um, you know, thank God she made it. Mm -hmm. um, since then, they have been vaccinated. She's wearing two masks now. Um, right. but she said it just even to this day, he said, when I had it, there's still, you know, I, I don't feel the same. 
her husband, um, it really did a number on him as well. He, um, right now, he's still not even walking right. Wow. Um, now, again, since then, they've been vaccinated, but um, he, they just haven't been the same since. It just did a mm-hmm. number on them. And they're up in age. They're in their, their 60s. So um, like you said, some people can, you know, they can really shake it off um, and they right. can they can fight it and they have a strong immune system or whatever the case is, they, they can get over it. Um, but some cannot. And, right. um, and, and yeah. one other thing too, you'll, yes. you'll see, you know, you'll, uh, you'll, you'll read that a lot of people are saying, well, no, Hey, you know, the vaccine's been out for a while, but yet, you know, people are still, you know, uh, getting COVID that's because we can't vaccinate fast enough. You know, the disease is, is spreads the new Delta variant. I think I read somewhere it spreads 10 times faster than the first one. Wow. So, you know, you, you just, you can't vaccinate fast enough. So one person can get 10 other people infected. Uh, you remember from, from early on, you, you would hear the stories of somebody having a barbecue and one person having COVID at the barbecue. And next thing you know, everybody's got COVID. Yep. It spreads so fast. And, and the reason you will still see some of these numbers going up, even though we're, we're vaccinating, we just can't vaccinate faster than it's spreading. Right. I'll share a couple of things. And I want to ask you another question about um, the vaccine. I um, obviously have a lot of friends in the ministry and pastors. We differ on this. And I think what you mentioned is true. It does point to leadership, who you allow, I mean, who you're listening to, <laughs> who right. you allow to speak into your life, who you, who you watching. And I have pastor friends of mine. Um, they've been extra safe. Um, they, they went virtual for a while. They, they did, they put in all these measures, you know, socially distanced masks, you name it. I have other pastors who I know they never, um, tried to mitigate no masks. People are packed in there like sardines. Mm-hmm. We're critical of people who wore masks, um, at all or at service. And, um, at the end of the day, um, I, my thing is this, and I've told our congregation, if I'm going to err, um, and I'm not saying I'm, that I won't, or I, I can't be wrong. I rather err on the side of caution. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm going to be wrong on the side of caution. So I'm going to try to, you know, lean toward the side of being a little extra safe, a little cautious, you know, use wisdom. And I'm not going to criticize people's faith or lack thereof if they want to try to mitigate, you know, the spread of the virus or, or try to protect themselves in their own way, whether it's socially distancing, whether it's, um, you know, I had a family member, she said, you know, Byron, you know, I had COVID right now. I don't feel comfortable going um, back to church right now. That's her decision. He said, I, I watch virtually. He said, I'll get back. He said, but um, just not right now. I respect that. You know, we've, you know, had that same message here that um, we want you to connect with us. We want you to worship with us either in person or online, but pastors differed uh, mightily on this issue. And, you know, I, I wish we had more of a, uh, a united stance on this, but it's just, that's just not the reality right now. So, you know, different pastors right. do different things. And I think every congregation is different demographically. The size of the congregation matters. I have a, I know a pastor, his congregation is very large. And so they were, they, they were a little bit more slow getting back to in-person worship. And even now they said, I think they may only try to have 50% capacity. You know, I, I my father pastors, he has a small church and um, his entire congregation is vaccinated. But they, um, the, the number is small, so they can spread out and they can socially distance. So every pastor, you know, has to do what's best for their congregation. But um, you do have pastors who differ uh, on this greatly. Um, right. I'll ask one question now. I'll, I'll see if anyone else wants to ask any other questions. Um, you said, I think you mentioned that either Pfizer or Moderna, they, in October, they may look at, and, and I do, there are a lot of parents concerned about their kids taking right. this vaccine, but they're going to approve it for children maybe the next month or so. We, and then what have we, you heard about we got boosters? word. Um, we got word today that um, that Moderna is, um, I'm sorry, let me make sure I'm telling you right, Pfizer. We got word today that Pfizer is looking at approving uh, ages 5 to 12, possibly um, by the end of October. 
Wow. So we're, we're still waiting on Moderna to be FDA approved, which mm. should happen probably in the next month uh, to two months. But Pfizer came out today uh, and said that they, um, they could have, by the end of October, they could have approval for ages five to 12, which, which you're right. I mean, that, that's going to lead to a whole nother topic on, on kids being vaccinated, um, you know, because we've, we've got a, a big mess with with schools fighting over masks, and then here comes uh, the vaccine. possibility of a of a vaccine for your kids. So yeah, that's gonna be a fight. <laughs> it's it's gonna be it's gonna be um you know a, a a wild couple months. But again, you know, knowledge is power. There is a lot of information um, you know at our fingertips. I would just encourage everyone to just follow the right things um, on social media. All the all the, the goofy stuff and the TikTok and that that's all fun, but just make sure that you're following um, following the professionals, um, you know, and, and, and some credible websites. Uh, and and again, I'm a little partial because I've been with Roper so long, but um, you know, these guys don't put out um, false information, and so you know, follow their sites um, and and follow what they're saying, and 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 you can pretty much bank on that's 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 a good lead to go to. Can you speak to people who have concerns about quick, the quick, the, the swiftness of the FDA approval, people who have concerns about, you know, maybe this has um, been influenced by money and, and you know, um, sure. as far as Pfizer just being able to profit off this, I hear that as well. Is there anything you can speak to that for people who are concerned about these FDA approvals being valid. Yes, absolutely. Let me find. Um, yes, here it is. Uh, and again, going back to the um, the Roper that that myths versus facts. Um, a myth is that the the vaccine is experimental. In fact, this is not true. All the vaccines have been put through standard safety testing before rolled out to the public. And then there's a link here that you can click on to read more. So they, they they've all gone through the the. The normal processes, it has just been expedited because it's such a dire need right now. So there's there was no, um, you know, you know, under the table money. Um, you know, sure the the um, the um, the big uh, drug companies have a lot to gain by this, um, but at the end of the day, they still have to go through these boards to get approved. Uh, and so yes, it it has gone very quickly, but. Again, you know, going back to your statement, it's a blessing. I mean, if, if, if imagine if we didn't have a vaccine right now still because it was tied up and, and, and didn't get to us. I mean, we would be in worse shape than we were. And so to, to me, you got to think positive. Yes, it, it came quicker than, than historical things have been passed, but that's a blessing. Yeah, yeah. Do we have anyone who would like to ask a question about this. Any question, comment, concern, anyone? Any questions? I don't think I'll see if I see anything on social media. I don't think I saw anything there. I'm, I'm happy. Um, Pastor Byron's got mm -hmm. my email address and my cell phone. Uh, you know, if, if anyone thinks of a, a question later on or, or if they don't feel comfortable asking in front of the group, um, I don't sure. mind at all that you that you call me or um, email me your question uh, and I will I will get back to you. If I don't know the answer, I'll find the answer and get it and get back to you. Awesome. Awesome. We appreciate that. All right, man. Listen, I think this has been a, a great session and I really appreciate you <laughs> taking time out of your busy Absolutely. schedule. Absolutely to come give us some information and perspective, really. I mean, you, you, you see it every single day. Um, I, you know, what really resonated with me was, and I've heard this in the media, how hospitals are, and I, oh my God, I feel for the, you know, those who are, I mean, frontline there and being overworked and, and how, you know, the healthcare workers can get little time off because of, you know, how, you know, how things have gone and, and, and not to mention those who may have un issues of can, they're dealing with unrelated to COVID and how they may not be able to, to be treated because of the overwhelming, you know, right number of people who, who are being infected. So, um, yeah, I, I would ask that you all pray for the, 
the mental stability of the healthcare system right now. It is it is overwhelming to say the least. And um, these nurses and physicians that are that are dealing with death on a day in and day out basis, and, oh, and it's yeah. it's new it's new to us. And yeah. um, I would ask that you guys just say a uh, a special prayer for for them and because uh, uh, you know their their family's getting sick, their kids are getting quarantined, and and on top of that. Um, they're working extra shifts more than they ever have. And so it's, it's mentally straining right now on the healthcare system. So that just keep those, those ladies and gentlemen in your prayers. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's, um, that, that makes it, um, you see the reality and the impact it's having, um, because we, we focus in on, you know, those who are being affected, but we sometimes forget about the ones who are treating them and, um, what it does to them. Mentally, psychologically, I, I can only imagine. Yeah, the hospital doesn't close. We're we're like Waffle House. We're open twenty four seven. Twenty four hours. Wow, my goodness. All right, let's go ahead and I'm going to wrap it up and pray, and I'll give a couple of announcements, and then we will close. And so, we'll do that. Father, thank you for this time, this, this this session. Thank you for the information that have come up that has come about as a result of, of us, you know, lifting this topic. We thank you for the information. We thank you, Lord, for the clarity. We thank you for the wisdom in helping us to have sound judgment about our health. Help us, Lord, to take the knowledge, take the information, and achieve your absolute best for our lives. We pray for our healing, for those who are vaccinated, unvaccinated, those who are maybe vaccinated, who have experienced breakthrough cases, those in the medical field. We pray for the nurses, the doctors, the surgeons, those who are putting in extra hours, putting their lives at risk every single day. We pray for their healing and we pray for their safety. We pray for their emotional and psychological stability. We pray for their families as well, Lord. I can imagine some of them have not even been able to see their families like they used to. And so we pray, Lord, for all the children in schools who can't be vaccinated, those who, you know, have people making decisions for them and for their health and safety. We pray that you cover our children in the school systems, whether it's public, private, whatever they, wherever they are. And God, we pray for the body of Christ, Lord, that we will prioritize wisdom, that we will help keep our congregates safe, that we will have a good testimony throughout this pandemic, that we will help serve others. We will show compassion, we will show empathy, concern, and unwavering love and support for all people regardless of their position, their stance, or level of faith. Father, help us, Lord, to display your, your love and your character throughout this challenging time. So, God, we praise you, we honor you, and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, just to wrap it up, uh, thank you for connecting with us again for uh, those who... Um, follow our ministry. Our plan is to be in person this Sunday uh, at 1030 at Fort Dorchester High School. Um, they are still working out um, some issues with their um, electrical challenges. Um, we just received an update today. If we plan on being there, however, if something comes up and, and those issues have not been resolved, we will be virtual this Sunday. But just make sure you check your email, your cell phone, your text messages. We'll keep you up to date on what's happening. All right. Thank you all. And Wes, I appreciate it. I'm going to call you after this session real quick, but I thank you. And That sounds and good. Thanks for God having bless. me. God bless. <laughs> we will see you all again. Take care. All right. God bless. All right.